Hello and welcome back to another video with It's Dr. Dan and today we're going to be learning about the concentration of solutions. So when it comes to a solution, when we are trying to concentrate all about this, we, we are trying to think all about how much solute there is dissolved within a solution, which feels like it can be one of the most complex topics in chemistry but it just boils down to just trying to understand some of your basic fractions and being able to label all of your parts very, very clearly when we're trying to understand what these are representing. So let's go through it and try to see if I can make this make a little bit more sense for you. So the whole idea comes down to is whenever we're trying to think about concentrations is that it's the amount of solute divided by either a volume or a mass and that's generally representing the whole or whatever the bigger component is within the solution. Now, why is this super useful? And it's because solutions are concentrated or dilute, meaning that the, of the amount of moles of a molecule in the liquid will vary. And we have to be able to understand and be able to represent that accurately. So that way, you know what exactly you're dealing with inside of the workforce or even within just the lab when you are when you're learning all about all this material. So as we kind of start to go through this, we will be learning about all these different types and to explore this of the three major types of concentration. So let's take a look at this and stay tuned to see what this is all about. So with concentration, there are three major units. There are percents. So with the percents, that's always the part over the whole. Now, when it comes to a percent solution, we can represent this a couple of different ways. Well, being that a percent is out of 100, we can either say it could be the mass of the solute over the mass of the solution. It could be the mass of the solute over the volume of the, of the solution, mass of or the volume of the solute over the volume of the solution as well. There are multiple ways to show this. In this video, we're gonna focus on M over M, and then we will also do one example of mass over volume to show that as well, to illustrate two of the more major types that you will see in introductory chemistry. There's also molality. So molality is a very useful term for describing colligative properties, which is how much if you add like a salt to water, how much does it lower the freezing point or even raise a boiling point? So it's something that it has an effect on those properties. And then molarity, which is probably the most common way that we show concentrations in chemistry, uh, where we always like to show how concentrated acids and bases are and different solutions that you're gonna be dealing with. So we're gonna go through each one, go through example problems and be able to work them out to show you exactly how to work with these. I have all the chapters marked down below. So if you're trying to look for a very specific one, you can go look for that specific specific area to help you pass your chemistry course. All right, let's take a look into our first one, which will be on percents. When it comes to percent solutions, why is this so important? Is because this is one of the most common ways we tend to illustrate the concentrations of solutions in biology in the healthcare profession. So percents, we have to remember exactly what that means. So if you need help with percents, please refer to my percent video in my math tutorial area. So percents was always meaning per cent, meaning per 100. So think a cent, century, cents as in the money is all about out of 100. So meaning what is our 100 in this case, it's referring to the whole. So we refer to mass percents as the amount of the part over the whole. Being that we're going to focus on mass percents, how exactly can we show that in terms of solutions? Well, the part in this case is your solute. So whatever is being dissolved within your solution. So let's say if I have some water and I sprinkle sodium chloride in there, sodium chloride will be the solute. Now the solution on the other hand is a little more complicated than that because it's not the same thing as the solvent. Remember solute, solvent, and solution are all different terms. So when we are looking at these, right, solute was the minor part. The solution is equal to the solute plus the solvent. So it's the mass of both of those components. 
added together because it's the part over the whole entire picture, right? So let's take a look at how we can actually utilize this in an example for working with percents. So just remember part over the whole. All right, what is the mass percent of a solution made of five grams of NaCl and 95 grams of water? So as I just said, part over the whole. So what we have to do is just label our two parts. So what is our solute in this case? That is going to be the minor component or whatever is the smaller bit. And now we also have our solvent as well. So we want to stay organized when we are working with these problems. So being that we have our solute, that's gonna be five grams of NaCl, and that's gonna be on top of our fraction. And the whole in this case is going to be our solvent, so 95 grams of water, but keep in mind, it's over the entire thing. So the solvent isn't everything, right? The solute is a big chunk. So we're gonna take those five grams of NaCl, add them to the 95 grams of water to make our entire solution. So that way when we do five plus 95, it's gonna equal 100. So what we will do is do five divided by 100 times 100%. And what we are going to get is a 5% by mass solution of NaCl, okay? So, and it's very typical to put 5% NaCl, but if you want to specify what type of percentage that is, that's always useful information to know for a reader as well. But usually we'll just say 5% NaCl when we are showing that information. Now, keep in mind, this is one of the most popular when it comes to biology, especially in the healthcare field, because you think of IVs, saline solutions, glucose solutions that you might be giving to patients are typically represented in percents. So if you ever see an IV, they always say about 0.9% of NaCl is how much you're giving, which is a standard, or about 5% of glucose, which is a standard amount of sugar for most patients. So you usually see these represented in percent. So you have to understand what do they represent. So you are giving the correct IVs to your patients. Solution is prepared by dissolving 2.214 grams of NaCl in 246 grams of water. What is the mass percent? So once again, we have another very similar problem to the one we had before. But instead, everything is still and is also being represented in very large units of grams and uh, for water as well. So when we are trying to represent these as conversion factors and we're given the percent, we put them over 100, but being that they are just a fraction, you can still represent them under whatever the two pieces are to add it together. So we are still gonna do the same process that we did before, right? We have our solute. We're gonna put that on the top and the bottom to make our part and our whole in this case. So we have our part, which is the 2.2146 uh, grams of NaCl. We're going to add that to water, which is 246 grams of water. And that's going to be times 100%. Keep in mind when you're doing these in your calculator, I would recommend putting the bottom in parentheses so that way it does the math correctly. It's really easy to just type, plug it away, and you'll get 2.24214. We'll divide 2.214 and cancel out. So you'll get like 1 over 246 and get a crazy number. That's not going to make sense. So when you do all this, what you're going to get is uh, 0.892% of NaCl, which is how much solution you need to prepare if you were trying to do this in the lab. Let's take a look at how this would be used as a conversion factor. So as I was mentioning earlier, this can be used as a conversion term too. It's not just limited to figure out, okay, what's the concentration? We might use it as well. Um, so if I said a solution is 25% sodium chloride, how many grams of solution are needed to have 15 grams of NaCl? So if you want to give a reaction 15 grams of NaCl, how much solution do you need to add? So with these, what's really important is to make sure you kind of uh, label and organize all these really important little pieces. So we have the 25% by mass of NaCl, 
And then we also have the 15 grams of NaCl here as well. So these are types of problems we have practiced before in other videos, um, especially when you're defining per cent out of 100. So what you can always assume is when you have a percent is being that this is by mass, you can say that this is 25 grams of NaCl over 100 grams of your solution. So you can do this for any sample. You can do it in empirical formulas. You can do it in concentrations. This has been used all over the place. We also have that we have 15 grams of NaCl as well. So what exactly are we looking for? What is our desired? Well, it wants to know is how many grams of solution are there in this, which as you can see, that's our unit here at the bottom. So what we need to do is what can we start with? Well, we can either start with the conversion term, which is on the left, or a term by itself. It's always easier to start with a term by itself because you cannot take an inverse of it. You can leave it just the way it is in chem. So we'll start with 15 grams of NaCl. We'll plug in 25 grams NaCl, and that's equivalent to 100 grams of solution. And what we can now do is we'll see is our units are going to cancel. And this is going to leave us only with grams of solution, which is exactly what we want. So we'll do 15 times 100, divide that by 25. And what we are going to get is there's going to be 60 grams of solution that we will need to add for our chemical reaction. And that is our correct answer. Let's take a look at our next type of concentration. Molality, which is moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. Now, typically this is referred to with water because we're always using this to describe something called colligative properties. Now, being that this is molality, so with an extra L in it, so I highlighted then white, it's represented by an italic M, so kind of like a cursive M when you are drawing this. So whenever we have a, a 1M, this is referred to as a molal, which is how you pronounce that. So if you want to know how many molals you have, you have, if you have one, you have one molal. So this is exclusively used generally to describe colligative properties. And that's because solutions, they vary with temperature. So one thing we're gonna, that, you, that you will learn about is that if the temperature changes, the volume of your solution is going to change with it because the more that these molecules are getting excited, the more they're going to essentially exhibit a pressure. So being that volume can change, this is why we use molality because it kind of circumvents that whole entire reliability on it. It goes purely off the masses, which will not change the, with the conditions. Now, molality is also a term that's generally some more of an older term because it was more used when, let's say, central air conditioning and central, central cooling was not as readily available. So you will start, you kind of see it's getting phased more and more out, but it is very heavily used still, especially when referring to colligative properties, which is how a solute changes things like boiling point and freezing point and osmosis and all the and, and all these other really important concepts. So let's try to use some try to solve for this in some calculations. Calculate the molality of sucrose solution made by dissolving 42.03 grams of sucrose in 62.03 grams of water. And I have the formula there to help us. So the first thing that we have to do when we are trying to solve this one is identify what our solute is. So being that water is the minor, or not water, sorry, sucrose is the minor component here. This is our solute. So what we have to do is convert that to moles of our solute. So what we will do is we have 42.03 grams of sucrose. In order to convert that to moles, we have to use the molar mass, which I provided here. So and usually for molecules this big, it typically is provided, but not always. So if it's provided, great, makes it easy. So we have 342 grams of sucrose, and that's gonna be equivalent to one mole of sucrose. 
And what we are going to see is that grams of sucrose cancels grams of sucrose, leaving us with just moles. So now when we are to do that, what we are going to end up getting is 0.1228 moles of sucrose. Now, are we done the problem? Well, as you kind of look up before, we have to divide that number by kilograms of solvent. So we have 62.03 grams of water. So we got to go from grams to kilograms, which if you can remember, 1,000 grams is equivalent to one kilogram from prefixes. So let's take that number that we found out from before and divide it by our water in kilograms. So we have 0 0.1228 moles. And we're going to divide that by 62.03, which is how much water was in the original problem above. So we have 62.03 grams. And we're going to convert that to kilograms in our fraction here. So let's kind of set that up for ourselves. So we're going to put a little mini dimensional analysis here in the denominator. So 1000 grams is one kg. So what this will be is 0.1228, and essentially they'll be divided by 62.03 divided by 1,000. So when we solve for that, what we will get is 1.98 molal, and we'll put that in that cursive M, and that refers to 1.98 moles of sucrose over one kilogram of water. Okay, so and that is how we would solve this problem here. It's just like that. Let's go on to another example using molality. If the molality of KCl is 5 molal, how many ions does KCl break into when it's dissolved? And then I ask, what is the total molality of the solution? So this is a two-parter. So KCl, how does that dissolve? So it goes off your solubility rules in understanding how all that works. So if I have KCl, which is aqueous, that's going to break down into our cation and our anion, which are K plus and Cl minus, right? So how many ions do you have? Well, looking at that, you have one, two ions total. So what does that refer to? Well, that refers to the second part of the problem which asks for the total molality. Now, one thing about molality, it refers to how many ions are in solution. It's about colligative properties, which is all about how ions affect different properties. So one thing that, that gets affected is depending on how many ions there are, that, concentrate, that concentration above can change. So there's five molal of KCl, but the total is essentially times the number of ions. So if I have two ions in solution, what I'm going to simply do is times that by five molal, and that's going to equal a total of 10 molal, where the total molality for all ions in the solution, and that's because it dissociated it into two pieces. So if you had something that dissociated it into three pieces, you would times it by three, four pieces of times by four, and so on. So it's all about how many ions that are in, in the actual solution. So it's a pretty easy concept, but it's kind of strange just because it's, it's different than any of the other concentrations. Um, so it's all about the ions specifically. Let's look at our last type of concentration. Our last type of concentration is molarity, which what molarity is, so molarity so with the r focus this time so the l it's the amount of moles of the solute over the volume of solution so it's all about the liquid side of it instead so now why is this one so important it's probably it's arguably the most common concentration that's used in a chemistry lab so if you have to use this in for future chemistry classes so with general chemistry analytical chemistry physical, organic, you will be using this a lot. So I recommend mastering it and getting comfortable with it. I have a, two follow-up videos for this, which is on molarity itself, 
and a dilution video to help emphasize this concept. So now when it comes to using it, let's try to practice using the formula and getting comfortable with it. So if I have an intravenous or an IV saline solution and it's being administered to a patient in the hospital, one saline solution contains 0.898 grams of sodium chloride and 525 milliliters of solution. What is the molarity? So from earlier, it was moles over liters. So, and that's the most important thing to remember. Remember big M is moles over liters, which is gonna be used a lot in this course. So if we are to use this, the first thing we need to do is convert our moles to liters. So what we have is grams of NaCl, and I'm going to convert that to molarity. So by using the molar mass of NaCl. So the molar mass of NaCl is 58.44. So let's write that down. So 58.44 grams, and that's equivalent to one mole of NaCl. Now, after we write that, we are going. We notice that all of our units cancel, which is really good for us. We want that to happen, so that way it ends up putting it all in the correct units. So now that we have that down, we can see that okay, that's going to be equivalent to zero point oh one five three six six moles of NaCl. Now for that, what we are going to now do is divide that by the liters of our solvent. So up above, we see that we have 525 milliliters. So to convert that to liters, we'll divide that number by 1000, making it 0 0.525. So if we were to finish this, so what we will do is we will take this number, we'll copy it, divide this by 0 0.525 liters. And what we are going to get in return is 0 0.0293 molarity. Now, this is a very, very small concentration. So when you have smaller concentrations, usually in introductory chem, we represent it just with big M molarity, just to keep it simple. But if you are in a more advanced class, it is very common to show this in millimoles or millimolarity. So we just refer to it as millimoles. So if that's to happen, uh, what you would do is you'd, you would essentially uh, times this number by a thousand and you would get 29.3 millimoles <laughs> to, as a concentration as well. So just so you're aware for anyone else that might be watching this, and using this for their course. Um, some instructors use it very commonly. I use it from time to time for smaller concentrations. So just so you're aware, let's go on to using this not only to solve for concentration, but this is one of the most commonly used stoichiometry of conversion factors that's used as well. Let's look at our last example. When we're, con when we're converting concentrations, we, we saw using percents, that was a very common way of converting but molarity is also very commonly used. So why not use them both together? So what is, a mol what is the molarity of a 6% solution of NaCl? And, and I want you to assume the density is 0.995 grams per milliliter. So how would we do this? So we gotta think for molarity, what was that, con what was that the symbols for that? So big M was equal to moles all over liters. Being that we have the percent above, so we have this percent here, let's try to put that into something useful. So if you remember, it was grams over solution. Well, mole, well, when it comes to molarity, that was also moles of solute over liters of the solution. So they're very similar to each other in terms of solute and solution. So with our 6%, we have six grams of solute or NaCl all over 100 milliliters of our sol or sorry 100 milliliters of our solution now we want to convert that to or sorry not 100 milliliters we have 100 grams of solution 
So being that is a mass by mass percent. So how do we get it to milliliters? Well, we were given the density here, which can help, which refers to the density of the solution. So what we are going to do is convert the bottom part of the formula first. So when we do that, we are going to take our 0 0.995 grams, and that's equivalent to one milliliter. And that's going to now cancel grams over grams. But being that this has to be into liters here, so if you remember how, so we need to now convert 1,000 milliliters to one liter. All right, so that's a lot already, but we're not done. We have essentially this in the right volume units, but we need to convert the grams of NaCl to moles. So what would be the last step? How do you go from grams to moles? And you think about it, it's molar mass, right? So the very, very last thing that you have to do to convert gra six grams of NaCl to moles is use molar mass. So if you take 58.44 grams of NaCl, and that's compared to one mole of NaCl, what these are going to do is we cancel this, these terms out, and that's going to give us moles of NaCl, a lot. So how would you put this in your calculator? How would you do it? So if it was me, I would do six divided by 100, it equals times that by 0.995, times by 1,000, it equal and then divide by 58.44. And what we are going to get is a, molar, a molarity of 1.02, big M for our final concentration. So this is a little bit of a preview of solution stoichiometry, which is very, very readily used in general chemistry and in, in, in the end of introductory chemistry. Let's take a look at our final thoughts and conclusions here. So as you saw, when it comes to concentration units, there's a lot, right? There are several different types that you need to practice and to go through and to get comfortable with. And you'll get and you'll use a lot of these in lab as well. So the percents and molality, molarity, these are all really big concepts. Now, which ones are the most important? So for you, for your scientific career, if you are a health science major, percents are going to be essentially used in terms of all IVs and a lot of different drugs that are administered as well in terms of pharmaceuticals as well. You will commonly see percents used in that capacity. So getting comfortable with knowing dosages and how they're used is a very good skill. In fact, if you've gone through my dimensional analysis videos and my math videos, you have seen these already and have gotten comfortable with them. Molality is generally mainly reserved for, I would say, more for science majors who have to go into harder chemistry courses. It's not used a ton after the solution chemistry in terms of uh, introductory chem. Even in general chemistry, it's a more of a rarer concentration. It's good to be aware of it because it is used, but it is a little bit on the rare side. Molarity, though, is the most common one in terms of chemistry. It's used all the time in terms of concentrations, and it's used in most laboratory settings. So I would get used to it because the higher that number is, the more concentrated it is, meaning the more moles there are within a given liter of solution. So it can be used not, as you can see, all these are not only concentrations, but they can be used to convert as well, which is why they are so important because they bridge the gap from our goal, which is always the mole, to either liters or kilograms or all these different units, which is extremely important. So thank you once again so much for listening. I hope that this video helped you a little bit. I know it was a longer one, but if you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And if you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. So. Thank you all so much. And if I see you on campus, please say hi, and I'll see you all later. Bye now. <laughs>